Hello students, we're going to do a problem today where ultimately we are trying to find the molecular formula for an unknown gas. We're given lots of information. We're given the mass of the sample, the volume, as well as the pressure it exerts, and the temperature. So hopefully from that you can recognize that the ideal gas law is going to come into play. And then we also are told information about the composition, namely the percent carbon, and we know that the remainder is hydrogen. So we will be able to figure out an empirical formula based on that information, and we will also be able to ultimately figure out the molar mass and combine that information, and we will get ourselves the molecular formula for this unknown. So let me get rid of a little bit of this, but let's more systematically look at what information we have available to us. Pressure we have, that's the 150 kPa kilopascals. Volume we have, that's 1.5 liters. Temperature we have, R we always have. So it looks like we're going to use the ideal gas law to find the number of moles. But once I find the number of moles, I'm going to be able to plug that in. And we had the mass from before. That's the first number given in the problem. So you can see there we're going to be able to get our molar mass. We'll come back at the end and we'll figure out the empirical formula and do some work. But let's go after this molar mass right now. I have a different video that deals a little bit more with the units associated with everything. Just a reminder, you have to make sure units of the individual components of the ideal gas law match the units of the version of the ideal gas constant that you are using. I decided to quicken this problem a little bit and leave out the bulk of the unit conversions. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in my P is 150.0 kPa. My volume is next, that's 1.50 liters, is equal to N, which is going to be the first variable that I'm really dealing with at the moment. Then I have 8.314 liters kilopascals divided by Kelvin mole. Then I just need my temperature, and of course it needs to be in Kelvin absolute temperature. Celsius just doesn't cut it for me. Down here, I'll just write that out. Remember, it's 273.15 plus your Celsius temperature gives you your Kelvin. So I have 49.8. That gives me this value for my temperature. I'm going to hold on to all my digits and try to round only really at the end. So you can see my kilopascals canceling there. You can see liters canceling. Kelvin will cancel Kelvin. And you can see my variable n is going to end up being in units of moles. So now we just need to divide both of these numbers over into the denominator over here. And I find that n is equal to 0 0.083799. That's normally more digits than I would probably hold, but on problems like this that involve empirical and molecular formulas, if you round too much, sometimes you might get yourself in trouble. Now let's go ahead and move up here into that next step where we said we were going to find the molar mass. Because remember, I have the mass and I just found N. So my molar mass is going to be equal to my 4.702 gram sample divided by this same big long number that I had before. But this allows me to determine that my molar mass is 56.11 grams per mole. So I'm going to hold on to that number because that's very important. Then I'll see if I can get rid of some of this other stuff to clear some board space. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out what the empirical formula is. I'm given this information that it's entirely made out of carbon and hydrogen. And I do know the percentage of both. So recall that we really need to pick some standard mass that you're going to use. We have this mass available. I'll probably end up using that. But remember, if you're doing one of these empirical formula problems, and you're just trying to figure out what ratios of the atoms you have, it's probably easiest in that case to just take the percentages 
call that also the number of grams. So you're effectively saying, I'm going to start with a 100 gram sample. So if I had 85% carbon, that would be 85 grams of carbon. Since we are given the actual mass, I'll go ahead and just use that. So 85 and some change percent of this 4.702 gram number ends up being for carbon, I have 4.026 grams of it. The balance, the remaining a little over 14% is all going to be hydrogen or the remaining mass, which ends up being 0.676 grams of hydrogen. Now that we have those masses, we want to divide by the respective molar masses for each of those atoms, the atomic mass. So for carbon, that's going to be me dividing by 12.0107, that's grams per mole. And for hydrogen, we're dividing by 1.00794 grams per mole. That gets me a little over a third of a mole of carbon and about that many moles of hydrogen. Now what we do is we're just trying to clean up these ratios to get whole numbers. So you always divide by the smallest. So I'm dividing both numbers by this guy. That's going to give me exactly one over here. And that gives me about two over here. So I know my empirical formula is going to be CH2. We know that I can't really have a CH2 molecule. That doesn't make any sense based on bonding. Remember, that's just the ratio of atoms here. My molar mass is down here, 56. So I'm going to have some integer multiplier of this value that's going to get me up to 56. So it's useful for me to know what the equivalent kind of molar mass of this empirical formula is. So molar mass of this CH2 chunk, this empirical formula. And so I get about 14.0266 grams per mole. From there, you figure out what is my integer value. What is this number here? If it were a 2, that'd get me up to 28. A 3's not quite there, but if this number were a 4, then that would get me up to my 56. And you can prove that by taking 56 divided by that 14 number we just came up with. But that is my multiplier to this empirical formula up there. So now this is ultimately my final answer. I just did a four times of the empirical formula, and this is my molecular formula, which is the thing that I was asked to find. Hopefully that made sense to you as we went through that process. Uh, certainly if it did, you should let your computer know.